does that kind of peacekeeping statement make sense for Toronto? I mean, do we put all our money into underground transit? Uh, well, I, I, I've always maintained the view that I don't think the exit space is as simple as LRT or subway or bus. I think that a, uh, a successful city um, adopts a, a, a range of transport solutions. And if you look at London, where I'm from, uh, there are there's obviously the tube, there are buses, there's light rail, um, there's a whole uh, range of, uh, of modes. And uh, what I think the, the key to it is getting the right mode for the right um, the right area. So uh, where we're talking, for example, and I've talked since I got here about a downtown relief line, um, I accept that that needs to be uh, the subject of an environmental assessment, but I cannot for one minute envisage it will be anything other than a subway. I cannot believe that that would be, uh, you could carry, you could, uh, it could fulfill its purposes by being serviced by buses or LRT. Uh, but other, other parts of the city where the density is much less, uh, LRT is a viable option. But if we could do it all again on, on a street like King Street, would it be less congested if we were running buses there instead of instead of streetcars? Um, well, we'd need to model that. So my, my personal view is I think that there is an argument. At, at some point, this city needs to bite the bullet, and I would love to see, for example, a subway under Queen, um, potentially under King. Uh, I would like to see another north-south subway. So a, a good candidate might be something like Dufferin. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, there's an affordability issue, and there is the practical issue that I can't change, which is we have ordered 204 streetcars. To cancel them now uh, would ca carry huge costs and would put back um, the solution by dec uh, probably a decade. But like what Doug Ford is saying is that if we put buses on there instead of the street instead of streetcars, like I know, which is obviously we made the order already, but there's this impression that buses. Uh, wouldn't hold up cars as much, uh, would, would make things run smoother. Is that is that true? Well, buses have some advantages over like streetcars, namely that they can overtake, whereas a streetcar, um, uh, by, its, by the very nature of it being uh, running on rails, it can't typically overtake. Um, but then on the other hand, streetcars have uh, greater carrying capacity and I would argue are a greener alternative to a bus, even with clean diesel. Uh, I'm not sure that people sitting in cafes on Queen Street want um, buses belching past them every But if you didn't minutes. eliminate parking, it would be the same issue, right? Uh, absolutely. absolutely. So isn't that now, the so, solution so to, me, to just eliminate well, so, parking on King well, and Queen? Well, to me, you, you know where I stand on that. I, some time ago, I dropped a bit of a bombshell by saying we really ought to look at um, potentially as, as dramatic as or drastic as uh, car free operation in the peaks on King Street. Um, I said that deliberately knowing that we probably wouldn't get that. I'm not giving up on that we need to uh, uh, do nothing is not an option. We definitely need to have better control of parking, restrictions on parking in the peak hours. We definitely need to have an extension to the transit um, pr uh, priority zone through the centre of town along King. And we definitely need to look again at things like traffic light phasing and uh, restriction of left turn. What's the status? Of that, wasn't it? Wasn't that it's been concern? worked upon, so we are working with the city. Steve Buckley, who's the uh, director of transportation services, uh, and my TTC team, my experts are working on that. Uh, it's probably taking a little longer than I would like, but it's something that I think needs to be addressed. We've yeah. got to get transit moving through the centre of town. But maybe, maybe a midway is just to say, get rid of parking so that you don't ban cars from King and Queen but you give them that in a sense be a dedicated lane. Sure, so that may be an option uh, certainly for the peak hours that's something that, that I think you've got to um, I'm not saying take a lot of time over but carefully evaluate so that's the reason why we're working with city transportation as well were the TTC to do it on its own we might be accused of just um, expecting to have all of the road at the expense of, tran uh, of regular traffic so for that reason we've got transportation services uh, I think it needs to be a holistic uh, solution so that you look at, you model what is the um, the impact upon traffic because it's got to go somewhere and where does all that parking go. Uh, so what you need to do is look at the big solution in conjunction also with the police for enforcement. Can I just, just ask you just to update the streetcar situation and were you uh, disappointed uh, with the police uh, performance and can you evaluate how this so uh, it has been a real challenge. I mean, these vehicles at the end of the day are around 30 years old. They've traveled something like 1.3 million kilometers each. Uh, they are old, uh, they are still safe, but they're basically at their, uh, they're pretty much at their life's end. We are, we are, we are life ex uh, extending 
uh, the shorter ones in order to, to bridge the gap before the new street cars turn up. The big um, uh, Achilles heel is the fact that they are braked and door operation is, is controlled by pneumatic airlines. And in very cold weather, they can cope with normal uh, Toronto cold, but with this Arctic vortex hitting, uh, moisture has built up within the airlines and that has frozen, which uh, applies the brakes and in some cases uh, makes the door operation impossible. So um, am I disappointed? Uh, I'm disappointed for my customers because I don't like um, you know, uh, not being able to do our job, which is to move people from A to B. But what I am proud of is my staff are working uh, ridiculously long hours fighting to get these uh, vehicles back on the road. I cannot see what more we could have done. How many are still off the road? Uh, today, uh, right as of now, it's just uh, it's around 25. Uh, but with the ambient temperature improving, we're, we're pretty confident we can start to get back to the peak uh, service. So um, I think we're through the worst of it. The, tra the temperature is due to rise over the next few uh, days uh, and we will get back to normal operation. In normal operation, the streetcars can cope okay. This is extreme. We're not uh, immune from uh, the impact of uh, uh, extreme weather. Look at what's going on at Pearson. Look at what's going on on the roads. So this doesn't build the case for subways in Toronto? Well, the, the new, weather, the I mean. new streetcars uh, are, are don't have pneumatic airlines. They have electric and hydraulic airlines, uh, airlines, uh, airlines. Um, so they um, they are way less vulnerable to that kind of thing. We did our due diligence before we bought these streetcars. They're not a new design. They've had to be adapted for the curves and inclines of Toronto. Uh, but they, um, they're based upon a proven design, a flexity uh, model, which uh, Bombardier have used successfully in other very cold cities. Thank you. Okay, no pass. Yeah, you too.